Hey, good morning. Meteorologist Scott Puglia here with your Tropics Outlook and discussion for June 29th, 2021. What an active start to the Atlantic hurricane season it has been already since the start of the season, even before the season began. Of course, we had one tropical system that was classified and yesterday, Tropical Storm Danny formed off the coast of South Carolina, making landfall as a minimal tropical storm. This system brought heavy rainfall to parts of Alabama and South Carolina, but now the system continues to kind of weaken as it moves into inland parts of Georgia and Alabama. But right off the bat with that system, we now have two more tropical disturbances in the far east central Atlantic that the National Hurricane Center is monitoring for tropical development. So we're going to talk about both of these disturbances, but truly hard to believe it's only June 29th, four named storms. Historically speaking, the fourth named storm doesn't arrive until August 23rd. So we're running roughly two months ahead of average in terms of historically the fourth named storm even developing at all. So again, this is kind of on pace with what we saw in 2020. We expected this season to be an active one. And so far, it has been. Hopefully, we continue to see these disturbances be minimal, as we have seen as of the last couple. But the next two certainly interesting systems that are in the far east central Atlantic, which is very uncommon for a location of disturbances in this part of the hurricane season. So, latest update from the National Hurricane Center, we've got Invest 95L and newly classified Invest 97L. Now, the first disturbance, as I'm going to show you on satellite in just a moment, is a little bit further north uh, than the second disturbance. Nevertheless, both of these disturbances do have an opportunity to develop in a spot that is very uncommon given the climatology of where tropical systems typically develop in late June and early July. So our first disturbance, dubbed Invest 95L, remember that L stands for Atlantic, basically an invest is just an area of disturbed weather that is being investigated or monitored for potential tropical development. 95L has a 40% chance of development within the next three to five days. The next name on the list would be ELSA. I do not come up with the names. The World Meteorological Organization is responsible for naming. Uh, we're coming up with this list of names and ELSA definitely doesn't sound like the most ominous name, right? You, you think of Winter Wonderland. But yes, the next name on the list is Elsa, followed by Fred. Fred would be the F-named storm. Our next disturbance, again, is Invest 97L. 96L went on to become Danny, so that's hence the reason for uh, the gap there between 95 and 97. But 97L in the far eastern Atlantic has a 20% chance for development over the next three to five days. Both of these disturbances, though, could bring impacts in the form of squally weather and also uh, breezy, gusty conditions and some localized heavy rain to parts of the Antilles chain as we go to the mid and latter part of the week. Now, what's interesting about both of these disturbances, again, is their proximity to land, but also their geographical location in the basin. Historically speaking, we look at the Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean Sea, and off the coast of the Southeast United States for hot spots of development in the month of June and July. Out here in the deep tropical Atlantic, this is usually pretty barren and very dry in the month of June and July, but not this year. And that can sometimes be a harbinger or kind of a precursor for an active Cabo Verde uh, hurricane season where you get these robust waves that roll off the coast of Africa uh, and kind of act as seedlings for tropical disturbances uh, and eventually can form tropical storms and or hurricanes. So let's take a look at these disturbances and I pulled up one image of the Gulf of Mexico as well. We've got some disturbances in the southern Gulf and I think it's worth watching uh, this disturbance off the coast of Veracruz and Tampico in the Bay of Campeche. It looks like it's going to move inland before it really does all that much. Uh, but just wanted to quickly show you that map that there is a big blow up of storms in the southern Gulf and some of this moisture could end up getting fetched up towards the northern Gulf Coast for 4th of July weekend. Not expecting this to develop into much, but yeah, continued storminess in the Gulf of Mexico, certainly. Uh, and that's kind of been the story for the past couple of weeks. Here's a look at the satellite animation for the east central Atlantic. 
And there's some pretty good takeaways to take from this uh, animation. Yes, if you're looking to the north and east, we definitely have some dry air that is prevalent uh, coming off the continent of Africa. You can see kind of this dust-laden atmosphere. It's really not all that dense, though. We call this the Saharan air layer, S-A-L for short. But if you look to the south of that Saharan dusty air mass, we actually have quite an active monsoon trough. Uh, that's what we call this kind of area of cloudiness and thunderstorms that sits just north of the equator. And if you look within this monsoon trough, sure enough, here's one area of spin you can depict on the satellite here. That would be Invest 95L. And then we also have a more defined disturbance to the south. This is Invest 97L. And the reason that I think some of our forecast models, the GFS in particular, are latching on to 97L, the second disturbance, for a better opportunity of development in the longer range is because of its uh, geographical location. Notice how 95L, a little bit further north than 97L. The water temperatures, the further south you get, closer to the equator in this region uh, of the Atlantic Basin, are warmer than where 95L is currently located. Also, you're further south, which means you're further away from that dry, dusty air that is coming off the continent of Africa. So the further away you are from the dusty Saharan dust, the SAL, that Saharan air layer, and also the warmer the water temperatures are where 95L is located, that gives this, I think, a better opportunity in the longer run to develop and potentially bring impacts to the Lesser Antilles and the Greater Antilles chain as we go towards the latter part of this week. But again, let's go talk about both of these disturbances because again, the first one, 95L, has a medium chance for development according to the National Hurricane Center within the next three to five days. So for my folks watching from the Northern Lesser Antilles chain over towards the US and British Virgin Islands, as well as Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and Haiti, this is something to keep an eye on. Wednesday into Thursday, as this continues to move its way into the Eastern Caribbean, it could bring some squally weather and maybe even a brief opportunity to develop into a depression or tropical storm. The second disturbance is what I'm going to spend a little bit more time on because that is what uh, the forecast models have been a little bit more zesty uh, or feisty with in terms of the longer range potential to develop. So let's look at 48 hours from now. This is the GFS forecast model, the American-based model. It did really well with picking up with Claudette uh, just two weeks ago. So it's been performing relatively well. Of course, it's had some flubs, certainly, where it showed ghost hurricanes, as I like to call them, where it shows development, and then we never really see that come to fruition. That's common with the GFS in the early part of the season. But I have to tell you, I've been kind of impressed with how the GFS has performed as of late in contrast to a couple seasons ago when the European model was kind of the leader in forecasting for tropical development. So here's a look at 48 hours from now on Thursday morning uh, into Thursday afternoon. And the GFS shows we may already have ELSA developing in the Eastern Atlantic. I'll kind of highlight this in pink. Here's the GFS 48 hours from now, and it shows a tropical storm developing in the eastern part of the Atlantic. This is our vorticity at 850 millibars. And when you see that kind of concentric circle there, that represents stronger vorticity, hence greater spin and tropical development. Now, on the flip side, look at the European model. Not much, right? There's that dot. It's in about the same location, but notice how much more broad this vorticity is on the European, right, compared to the GFS. European, GFS. So you get the idea. Just 48 hours from now, we're going to get a better idea of what this system may do because both of these models kind of show you the two tails of what could happen. GFS says we could have a developing tropical storm. European says nada, not much. It shows this kind of just petering out and succumbing to dry air. But again, 
we will know in just about 48 hours or get a better idea of what this disturbance may do. Here's a look at the European as we continue to advance this. It does show maybe a depression, maybe a weak tropical storm approaching the southern Lesser Antilles chain, but look what happens. As it goes into the eastern Caribbean, that disturbance just basically fizzles, and we see that remnant vorticity kind of near Cuba by the time we get to Saturday and into Sunday on July 4th. But again, it doesn't show much really there at all. The GFS forecast model, let's go out to the same time frame and we'll advance this. This shows a stronger tropical storm uh, moving towards Barbados and over towards St. Lucia. This is again on Friday and into Saturday, so the Lesser Antilles chain should definitely have an eye on this, as well as the Windward Islands in the lower part uh, of Trinidad and Tobago. They should have an eye on this as we go towards the Friday night time frame. By, we, by the time we get to Saturday into Sunday, this is potentially a hurricane that is being shown in the Caribbean on the GFS. It's a little bit slower. But here's Monday, and this is July 5th, Monday, July 5th. The GFS shows a potential tropical storm and or hurricane developing in the Caribbean. Meanwhile, the European model shows just a elongated wave axis. So there are sharp contrasts with our forecast models, but being that the GFS has performed a little bit better as of late and the European has kind of been slower to get the game with regards to these tropical disturbances, it's worth watching. GFS has been more consistent with possible tropical development, and just for kicks, I will show you uh, a look at both the Canadian and the GFS ensemble model data, which is kind of a culmination of many different runs of the same model, and we'll pull this back up. Here's a look at Saturday on the Canadian model. And you can see there are all these little areas of red uh, indicate areas of low pressure or potential areas of low pressure. And this would be Invest 97L potentially developing in the Eastern Caribbean. That's a look at the Canadian. And then we'll pull this up and show you the GFS here briefly. GFS ensemble data, much, much more of a signal here. When you see all of these kind of tightly clustered in one area, that's a better signal for tropical development as we go towards the Saturday and into Sunday time frame. European model data, not nearly as, um, let's say, optimistic with the odds of development with this disturbance. So again, it's something for us to watch. It's no imminent threat to any land areas, especially not the continental United States, but we will continue to keep an eye on it. The season has already been active for named storms through June 29th, and we could potentially have our fifth and maybe even sixth named storm, according to the National Hurricane Center's five-day percentages, uh, as we continue to look forward within the next week. As always, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, and we'll continue to have more updates as we go throughout hurricane season. Have a great rest of your Tuesday, and I'll talk to you all soon.